All right, I want to talk a little bit about how to catch brook trout in the dog days of summer. We're now uh, the first couple days of August. It's uh, pretty hot. Um, most people don't associate this with good brook trout fishing, but let me tell you, you can actually catch brook trout all year long. No problem. So the first thing you have to know is about brook trout is that they're cold water species. They don't like warm water. So if there's a place that's in the sun, they're not gonna like that. They're gonna avoid that. Uh, they like lots of oxygen and with cold water that increases the amount of oxygen that can be carried in the water And so they seek out those locations. I'm here uh, just below a little beaver log jam And it's actually oxygenating the water coming down this little riffle So at the end of riffles you can find brook trout, but only if the water is deep enough so Like I said if the water is shallow Then the water is gonna heat up and if it heats up Then those brook trout are gonna leave uh, if you find you're catching other species besides brook trout, like little chub minnows, you're in the wrong spot. So you need to keep uh, keep looking. Undercut banks are a great location for brook trout, uh, and you got to get off the grid off the grid too. Because if you're fishing uh, near a roadway where everybody else fishes, those fish that are there are going to get caught. So what you want to do is is walk back a fair ways. The further the better. Uh, walk till you find a spot. Uh, if you can find an un underground spring, you know, if you found a fish, you found a place where the water is cool enough to hold those fish, to hold those brook trout. And in the summer, temperature is everything to a brook trout. You, like I say, you're not going to catch them if the water is warm. Um, on bright sunny days, you're going to have a harder time catching them. And not because they're not there anymore, but because they're going to be hiding. They're going to get out of the sun, they're going to get under the banks, they're going to they're going to do everything they can to maintain the proper cool temperature for them to thrive. Uh, catching brook trout isn't very complicated in a creek or a river. Um, I just use uh, a single number four hook. I've got a pile of them. And the reason you need a pile of them is because you're going to get snagged a lot when you're doing it properly. So just a small hook. Uh, I sharpen these up uh, with a small file. And I use a little split shot because the, the, the fish are going to be down in the bottom. So you want to use your split shot to get down there with them. So I say, I say, that's all my tackle for brook trout. That's it. I can catch brook trout in the lake with just a single hook and a, a split shot. Uh, of course, the secret weapon is the worm. Uh, brook trout will take a spinner, but not as readily as they will a worm. So to rig up your worm, it's pretty simple. So you're just gonna tear off the back section. You can keep that, because if you run out, you can always use it. And then you're just gonna wanna thread your worm up your hook until you get a small tail left over. And then you're gonna pull that through. And then you're gonna pull your worm up your line just like so. Uh, and that's going to imitate a leech. I mean, it's a worm, right? But it it, it pr provides a lot of movement uh, in, in the creek when it's working its way down. So there you go. There's your setup. You don't need any swivels or snaps or anything like that. Um, you just want to make sure you get down to the bottom. And you want to try your best to let the worm work its way down the current by itself. Rather than... Uh, trying to uh, guide it. I mean, you can guide it a little bit. If you see some undercut banks or whatnot, you can guide it underneath there and you want to let it run. If you let your line run as far as you, it could, eventually it's going to get into a spot that holds a brook trout, but you're going to risk snagging yourself. So you want to get a little bit closer to where you need to be. Uh, if you find that your line sinks down to the bottom and you think there's a fish there, but it's not taking it for whatever reason, just give your, your line a little jig. That'll give it a little bit of action and that'll trigger the fish's predatory instinct come in and grab it and maybe come out of cover and grab it. The next thing is if, if you're in a spot and you do a couple casts you don't catch a fish, it's because there's not a fish there. So move on to the next spot. And there could be a number of reasons why you're not catching a fish in one spot versus another spot. And a lot of it has to do in the summer, especially is because of temperature, uh, cover. Uh, they like to be out of the current, but just out of the current, not straight in line with the current because that's a lot of work for a fish. So they'll move off the side to find a little eddy. That's a nice place. This water here is pretty slow moving. 
uh, so it doesn't provide a lot of oxygen and not a lot of current. So the trick for this river system is just to find those low spots because the water is at its lowest point now. It's, it's running at its, its summer low flow. So the fish can't move around too much, which is actually a good thing for summer fishing uh, because now all I have to do is find those deep pockets and the deep pockets are going to hold fish. My general rule is I like to take two fish out of a hole. Um, if I wait on a hole long enough, that hole will come back to life because the fish, you pull a fish out, pull two fish out, then the other fish become spooked and then and they're not into feeding anymore. So they'll, they'll take a break and you know wait to see what's up before they take a stab at it. Normally the, the biggest fish that's in the pool takes it first um, and then there'll be a, a shadow fish, one kind of in the, in the, in the wake of this bigger fish because these fish are territorial too. They protect, uh, they protect rights and access to these locations that have the things that they need to survive. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a walk down to one of my pools down here uh, that has held fish before and we'll, we'll figure it out from there. Okay, I come up a little ways. I'm at my first hole. Uh, this is at the bottom of the riffles. So it would ordinarily be a really productive spot, except today the water's low. Um, there might be a fish in here. It's about, I'd say about two and a half feet deep, um, but I can see to the bottom. If I can see to the bottom, then a the fish can see everything that's going on up here. And they're also a lot more wary of predators, like flying birds that might swoop down and grab them. Um, so I'm gonna try a cast or two in here, but I don't think I'm gonna catch anything. Uh, and then I'm gonna move my way down a little bit further because it gets deeper down there I've, and I've caught fish at low water uh, down a little bit further. I'd also like to mention that when you're coming in the dog days of summer, you know, especially anytime you know, after May, when the weather starts to heat up, mosquitoes come out. So you're gonna wanna bring at least a bug spray uh, or if not a full bug jacket. I mean, it, it's really bad here in June to the point where, you know, it's unbearable. Uh, my secret weapon is a pair of latex gloves, uh, just the, the ones that you would get from, you know, the hospital, doctor gloves or whatever, rubber gloves. You're gonna get hot when you do that. Uh, you're gonna sweat. So you bring water and you drink. Um, the, uh, the bug jacket too, full bug jacket, uh, tuck, tuck your, uh, your pants in into your socks uh, I wear boots, uh, so I don't really have that problem, but you don't want a shirt that rides up because the, mos the mosquitoes are going to be biting, you know, where your shirt doesn't cover. And you want two layers, if you can, two layers of pants, uh, if you can bear it, uh, two, uh, two layers of shirt because, like I say, bugs, mosquitoes can bite through one layer, especially a, a thin cotton shirt, no problem. So when you, when you come out uh, in the summer, you got to be prepared for the biting insects. So anyway, I don't have those in here. Uh, I don't like using bug spray uh, and I'm, I can tolerate the mosquitoes. They're not terribly bad. It's, it's August, it's kind of in the middle of the day. So it's, it's not too bad. They're, they're pretty bad. I mean, I probably, I, I might put them on. It's a little bit, you know, I don't like wearing because you can't see very well, but at the same time, who likes suffering? And uh, this is kind of a good balance between the two. All right, so I'm gonna take a cast uh, and if not, I'm gonna move down a little bit further.